What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and I want to give you an overview and a review of Windows Phone 7, show you the nuances of the operating system, what's good, what's bad, and talk about how it's going to fit in the entire mobile marketplace. So if you have an interest in the operating system and how it's going to work, stick around. So we're going to do this demonstration on the HTC Surround. This particular video is not going to be a review of the Surround itself. We'll focus on hardware reviews in upcoming videos. Uh, but I do want to show you the operating system and how it works as a whole. So let me talk about first the idea behind Windows Phone 7. Uh, and this is directly from Steve Ballmer's mouth at the Microsoft announcement in New York. Uh, what's really important to Microsoft is no fragmentation. Uh, so they have to make sure that the operating system is going to be the same across all experiences. So every device that's going to be running Windows Phone 7 has to meet a minimum spec requirements to ensure that it's going to be fast, or at least fast enough to make Microsoft happy. Uh, and that means that no matter what phone you pick up, whether it's the HTC Surround that we have here, uh, Samsung Focus, or the HD7, whatever it might be, your experience is going to be very, very similar. Uh, they're not taking the Android approach of different operating system versions on different phones. It's going to be the same version of Windows Phone on each device. And that's going to be true with carriers as well. Uh, the updates will be pushed out sort of uniformly uh, to make sure that there is that conformity uh, throughout the operating system. Uh, they wanted you to be able to sort of see all your information very quickly with one click. And they wanted to have it to be sort of accessible in a uh, easy to access manner, and something that was very visually appealing. So I think one of the biggest problems Windows Phone 7 is going to have is that it's made by Microsoft. It's a very polarizing company, much like Apple. So when you watch this video and you put together your own opinions on Windows Phone 7, try and separate Microsoft from the equation. Try and look at it as an operating system as a whole and how it works, and try and take out the fact that it's made by Microsoft and whatever preconceived notions you might have about that. Once I was able to do that mentally, uh, I was able to appreciate the operating system a little bit more. So I'm gonna ask you to do the same and sort of put yourself in almost a, a journalistic uh, mindset and very editorial and try and take that uh, those preconceived notions out the window. All right, so I've talked about the phone. Let's go ahead and show you. So the home screen is made up what Microsoft is calling these live tiles. And essentially what they are are grid sized uh, widgets that update live uh, in the background. So you have a ton of ways you can set these up, uh, but essentially when you want to view them all, it is a completely a vertical scrolling. Uh, and at first I found that vertical scrolling to be quite a bit cumbersome. I had to scroll down and down and down to get to where I wanted to go. And as I was doing that, I was using my iPhone. I was realizing that I was scrolling left and right horizontally to get to my applications. Um, very similar to uh, Android as well, to scrolling through home screens. So this is sort of a reverse of the way you might be used to scrolling on iOS or Android. Uh, it is something that you do get used to. Uh, so these all these home screens update. You can see right here, it's people. And that's in place of a traditional contacts uh, type of menu. It sort of pulls in everybody's Facebook information, Windows Live, and a few other social networks uh, into this sort of universal uh, looking contacts field. Interestingly enough, there is not any native support uh, for Twitter. It's not gonna pull in your Twitter uh, contents uh, natively and amalgamate it into this uh, people's tab. Uh, unfortunately, it's actually going to have to rely on a third-party application uh, for Twitter, uh, much like I have right here. Windows Phone 7 is very much about the social experience, and the Twitter emission uh, is pretty significant, although I assume eventually uh, Twitter will be included. So let me go ahead and open up the people tab here and show you very quickly what that looks like. So you can go ahead and scroll through. You can see everybody's information. Get that back in focus here. I can go ahead and see everybody's information and see what's there. You can scroll through and see what's new on Facebook. You can go ahead and see recent pictures and uh, go back to your uh, task menu or your array, rather, of contacts. And that's sort of how you go through and dial. Uh, what is really missing here with this, though, is a way to quickly scroll through contacts. Uh, on the iPhone or Android, you can hold your finger down the side and scroll through and jump to letters. Here you have to do a lot of flick scrolling to get to where you want to go. Uh, it's something that I think definitely needs to be fixed uh, in coming versions. So with this, with the risk of making this a very long video, I'm going to sort of jump now past uh, the live tiles and just know that these do update live in the background. You can set live tiles for your favorite contacts. Although it's not going to be able to call your contact directly, it's going to open up a menu whether or not you want to call 
or text that person. And that's sort of Windows Phone's answer to uh, speed dial, uh, I would suppose. So this operating system is very animation heavy and it looks really good. And you see these little animations, these little nuances pop up throughout the entire operating system. Let me give you one quick example. So when the phone is locked and you go ahead and unlock it, the unlock screen, first of all, gives you a lot of information, which is very useful. Uh, different email accounts and such show up there. But as you go ahead and scroll this up, you can see the text start to fade away. And there's lots of very little sort of animation hints like that. Uh, that make me sort of appreciate the operating system. Uh, the physics engine here is really solid. It's got that sort of rubber band effect uh, as you scroll. Uh, really just uh, makes it feel like a very polished operating system. Uh, sort of something that I would have liked to have seen when, say, WebOS launched. Uh, the fact that Microsoft is imposing minimum spec requirements I means every phone can support this. And your experience with these animations is going to be really nice. And you see them sort of pop up throughout the operating system. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about these more uh, these hubs and the hub customization. So some of these hubs take up the entire row. You can see right here, there's a calendar, takes up the whole hub, and you've got this HTC that takes up the whole hub. And you can go ahead and move these around, but you can't pick whether or not they take up one spot or two. It's sort of set by default. So since you are gonna have the same experience across all the devices and different manufacturers, how are the manufacturers going to customize the experience? And the answer is they can customize these hubs. So here's the HTC experience. This is the HTC hub. And once you sort of put in custom information uh, about the manufacturer, whatever they like to be in there. So you get sort of a cool animation here. And then you get what will be very familiar looking for those of you that have used a Sense device. And this is the way that HTC is customized. It. Samsung has their own customization in there, which gives you access to a Today screen, weather, and widgets. Uh, but this is sort of the way that HTC has done it. So while there is sort of a universal feel throughout the device, uh, there is still customization that can be done. You can see here's some more example uh, of the animations. We're sort of jumping through a lot of these nuances very quickly because I want to sort of show you everything uh, in one sort of unified video. In upcoming videos going through the devices, I'll talk a bit more about the operating system as well. All right, so let's talk about the browser, which is based on the Internet Explorer standards. And hearing that is one of the places where I need you to sort of take back and step back from your preconceived notions about Microsoft because this is a very good browser and probably one of the best implementations of pinch to zoom that I have seen on a mobile device, uh, iPhone included. It is extremely smooth, very fast. Scrolling happens without any sort of checkerboard pattern down there, so there's no waiting for it. The content is there, easy to view. You can double tap to zoom in. Things just work very well on the browser. What's not here right now, and what sort of shows that it's a young operating system, we don't have Flash support, unfortunately. Uh, you don't have support for HTML5, and oddly enough, right now there isn't any sort of native YouTube support. Uh, you have to open up an application, and it doesn't really work all that well. Uh, so presumably that will be coming. Uh, when all these uh, operating systems were launched, they certainly had their shortcomings. Uh, so when the iPhone was launched. Notoriously missing was cut, copy, and paste, and multitasking. When Android first launched, uh, it was missing a multi-touch browser and a few other features. Sort of every uh, operating system that enters the sphere is missing features. Uh, and Windows Phone 7 is certainly no exception. Uh, it's missing, and a few really key features. It's missing cut, copy, and paste. Although Microsoft did show us cut, copy, and paste, to know that it is there and is coming, the implementation was actually pretty good. Uh, so hopefully that will be coming according to their promise uh, in early 2011. Uh, no threaded email is very annoying here. The email application is fantastic. Uh, it works really well, very easy to set up, um, but no threaded messaging makes it difficult. And that's something I'll show you in a later video too. In the interest of time, I'm going to have to sort of brush by it. Uh, cut, copy, and paste I mentioned. Uh, no multitasking, so the sort of native Microsoft applications can run in the background. You can run the Zoom player in the background, listen to music. Applications will download in the background. Uh, but there's no background support for third-party apps, which is a bit disappointing. And speaking of third-party apps, uh, app support is really important to the success of a platform. And I have to say that Microsoft has done a very nice job with their marketplace, which actually just went officially live uh, today, which is the 21st of October. And there are a lot of apps here. You can download sort of custom HTC apps if you're using uh, a device here like the Surround. You can go ahead and jump in, and the applications are all sort of sorted by category. You can download Xbox Live games, and there are a ton of sort of things that you can choose from here. Social, productivity, and a lot of different categories. And there are a ton of applications here. Um, and as this sort of the platform matures, we're going to see many, many, many more. 
and the uh, applications can be downloaded, excuse me, rather paid for uh, right through your carrier bill. So you don't really have to worry about putting in a credit card. Uh, something to keep in mind. So if you're worrying about app support, uh, this is very, very, very good. Uh, as far as the launch, I think it's much more full featured than Android Marketplace was it, when it launched. Certainly Android has surpassed it now. Uh, but as the platform matures, I think that the application support is going to increase with it. So very impressed uh, with that so far. Uh, one of the things that I want to show you in the last things is the keyboard, how you're getting input text on these phones. Uh, some are going to have full corded keyboards, some are going to rely right on the touch screen. So let me go ahead and show you what the touch screen keyboard is going to look like here. We'll go ahead and open up a new message. And I'll tell you that it works very well. It takes the traditional approach that we've seen on other devices, uh, at least in text messaging, of using that sort of bubble. Keyboard works awesome. It's got a great uh, auto correction feature. This is probably the best keyboard I've used uh, on any mobile device. I've tested quite a bit. Certainly devices with larger keyboards and larger sizes are easy to type on. Uh, but this one, at least in portrait, uh, is extremely easy to use. Uh, the auto correction features are very good. You can sort of see it move around. You have a separate button for your emoticons. One of the issues that I do have with it though is when you type in landscape, you expect the keyboard to get a lot bigger. There's a lot of wasted space there on either side. I would have liked the keyboard uh, to have been a lot larger. Let's go ahead and put this back up here. So I know I had to sort of brush through a lot of features and I couldn't show you everything about the phone and I will uh, sort of delve into these things more in upcoming videos, but I wanna give you a conclusion about the operating system uh, and how I feel about it. So despite this being a new operating system, it is entering the sphere of very mature operating systems. So we're talking about iOS and Android, uh, which have a lot of these features that Windows Phone 7 is missing. I think in the long run, Windows Phone 7 is going to be a tremendous competitor uh, to Android and iOS. I think it's sort of a nice in-between between the very sort of locked down uh, Apple model and the very open uh, Android model. This allows developers customization through these hubs, uh, but keeps things very unified to make sure you've got a similar experience. So I think Windows Phone 7 has tremendous potential. In fact, I've been using a Windows Phone 7 device as my daily driver for about a week and I have no plan on switching back to using an iPhone. Uh, it's been very easy to use, it's been fun to use, uh, it's been sort of a very short learning curve and it's been doing everything that I've wanted it to, to do. Every day I go ahead and look in the uh, app marketplace here and there are new applications that I'm using. Uh, Netflix is here, Twitter applications are here, uh, all the rest of the music streaming stuff that you like, it's all going to be here. So if you're looking to get a new phone uh, sometime in the near future, I think you owe it to yourself to at least look at Windows Phone 7 because you might be surprised. Uh, it feels very, I guess, un microsofty And it wasn't what I expected having come and seen uh, you know, Windows Mobile 6, 6.5, and the previous versions. Uh, Microsoft really did a very nice job with this operating system, uh, making it very modern, scalable, and really useful for the professional, uh, the texter, or the casual user. You'll find something that you like here. Uh, though you are going to have to live within some limitations, such as the lack of cut, copy, and paste, and full multitasking, which presumably all will be coming soon. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the sort of overview and review of Windows Phone 7. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.